A featherweight unification match between Salvador Sanchez and Eusebio Pedroza was on the wish list of all hardcore fans back in the early 1980s. Uh, Salvador Sanchez was boxing's answer to James Dean as his promising career was abruptly cut short by a tragic car accident and how much farther he could have went in the sport and how great he could have been uh, has been the subject of just endless debates. You know, at the time of his death, uh, Sanchez was looking to step up and wait, and there was a talk of a match between himself and uh, Alexis Arguello, and that could have been one for the ages, as could have been a match as a, a, a match with uh, Pedroza could have been as well. So, uh, yeah, it would have been uh, interesting to see how effective Sanchez could have been had he stepped up in weight and class in the uh, great years that were the 1980s. Now, Sanchez's strengths were his precision punching and rhythm. And he had an endless supply of stamina and was diagnosed as having an abnormally uh, functioning heart, which allowed him to seemingly never get tired. Now, I don't know whether this is true or not, or maybe it's just part of the uh, legend of Sanchez that's up for argument. Uh, but it was his accuracy and rhythm that I found most impressive about Sanchez. Uh, he had a jab that just couldn't miss, and his combinations were many works of art. Uh, he had a fighting style that was just it was just beautiful to watch for a purist and a, a casual boxing fans alike. Uh, you can see he had a, an economy of movement, so there is no wasted motion. Each punch is thrown with a textbook precision. And throughout his uh, championship career, there wasn't a fighter who could really sustain any uh, prolonged success against him. Uh, he fought the best featherweights of his era, which was impressive considering the brief time he was in the limelight. He defeated the likes of Juan Laporte, Patrick Ford, Ruben Castillo, Azuma Nelson, and of course the great Wilfredo Gomez. Now, did Sanchez have any weaknesses? Well, it's almost like splitting hairs here because he did have trouble against slick boxers like Patrick Ford and Ruben Castillo. Uh, Zuma Nelson gave him some trouble as well, but he, he was still too raw to pose a threat. You know, if anything, Sanchez, if he had a weakness, it was that he was too patient. Now, in contrast to uh, Sanchez's shortened career, uh, Eusebio Pedroza made an astonishing 19 title defenses of his WBA featherweight crown over a seven-year reign. Uh, he's not remembered as fondly as his counterpart uh, in Sanchez uh, because, you know, Sanchez had that big fight against uh, Wilfredo Gomez. But in looking at their records, um, and in looking at their records, I have to give Sanchez a bit of an edge in fighting tougher competition. But that being said, uh, Pedroza's challengers were not all slouches. Uh, he defeated Rocky Lockridge twice. He outpointed Juan Laporte. And in the Laporte fight, Pedroza was shaken by the uh, Laporte's power early, but uh, utilized some well-placed low blows to uh, slow down his young opponent. He also drew with uh, Bernard Taylor. That was a fight Pedroza really won. Uh, it took place in Taylor's hometown. And he, was, and he fought Patrick Ford, who also fought Sanchez. And Pedroza was more impressive in uh, taking out Ford in 13 rounds. He dominated Ford while Sanchez... Uh, had one of his toughest fights against uh, Patrick Ford. Pedroza was, like Sanchez, a, a slow starter. He danced and probed with his jab in the first couple of rounds before figuring his opponent out. Uh, he was a true 15-round fighter, and he always closed fast in the championship rounds. Uh, Eusebio Pedroza always dominated in rounds 13 through 15, uh, just like Salvador Sanchez did. I would argue that Pedroza was a bit past his prime when he uh, went to Ireland and lost his featherweight title to Barry McGuigan. He was never the same after that fight as he retired, but returned five years later at the age of 35, then forgotten, pretty much forgotten by the fans, but he managed a few wins before being decisioned by an unknown in uh, Mauro Gutierrez, and he finally called it quits at age 36. So who would have one of these fighters met back in 1982? Um, they both have two common opponents in Juan Laporte and Patrick Ford. As I said, uh, Sanchez clearly outpointed Laporte, while Laporte uh, did a little better against Pedroza, even rocked him, but Sanchez struggled a bit against Patrick Ford while Pedroza dominated Ford and he stopped him in 13 rounds. So what we can draw from that is that styles make fights, and this would be a nip-and-tuck affair that would uh, build suspense like a slow-burn horror movie. There would be a lot of jabbing and feeling out in the early rounds, 
but I think by uh, round 10, uh, the punches would be coming fast and furious. I would favor Eusebio Pedroza by the slimmest of margins. Uh, he had better defense. Uh, he was 10 degrees slicker than fighters like uh, Ruben Castillo and Patrick Ford, both of whom gave uh, Sanchez trouble. Uh, Sanchez seemed to operate best against aggressive fighters. And in Pedroza, he would be facing a guy that would not initiate. He would force Sanchez to be the aggressor. And in his prime, I think um, by the, in the early 1980s, an argument can be made that Pedroza had the best defense in boxing. He was right on the level of Wilfred Benitez. So based on those past performances, I would favor Pedroza to eke out a narrow decision victory over Sanchez. Uh, the guy would just do anything to win. He, he had well-placed low blows. He had bolo punches. I think this is a case of styles make fights. And uh, Pedroza would just be just a hair too slick for Salvador Sanchez.